Tony, Mask Hikes here. Today I am putting out what is probably going to end up being my last video before I'm actually traveling to Georgia. This is going to be a real quick run through of everything that is officially leaving Nebraska with me and headed to Georgia. So let's take a look, shall we? Okay, so I've done a couple other gear videos. Uh, I did my big three, I did my cook system. I've never really talked too much about clothes. So I'm gonna take a minute and just kind of focus on that right now. Now, first thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is what uh, is going with me but not necessarily being worn regularly. I decided a while back that I was gonna kind of sort everything in, in uh, um, dry bags just because it seemed like it was working better for me to pack it plus it was easier for me to organize while I was trying to decide what was going and it's just kind of stuck I may end up ditching the, the dry bags I don't know weight wise they're pretty irrelevant I maybe maybe I'm gaining four or five ounces so let's talk about what's in my clothing bag and I've got three different designations, I guess, for lack of a better way of putting it. I've got my carried clothes. I've got my cold weather specific gear, which is in that orange dry bag. And then I've got my worn clothing. So in this uh, carried clothes bag, I've got an extra pair of uh, ex officio boxers. This is my sleeping gear. It is a set of Smart Wool 250 base layer. That will exclusively be for sleeping in unless by some slim chance in the middle of March or even April I'm stuck on trail and I'm just freezing my caboose off and my hiking uh, leggings don't cut it for me. Then I'll have that as an absolute backup. Otherwise that will be exclusively for sleeping in. And then these guys I picked up just kind of on a whim as an afterthought just in case by some slim chance I'm freezing my caboose off one night. Just a pair of uh, Aegis Max. They're off of Amazon down booties. Don't know how often often I use them. They were only like 15 bucks, and they weigh pretty much nothing. So if I use them at all, awesome. If not, I'll just stick them in a box and send them home at some point, or maybe I'll just hike, hiker box them. I don't know. Um, but they're just kind of an emergency thing, to be honest. I've never once been cold in my uh, Cedar Ridge quilt. I don't foresee that being an issue, but crazier things have happened. Extra pair of uh, darn tough socks. A pair of swing trunks that I'm carrying for basically town shorts. And then uh, a backup shirt that'll kind of be my town shirt as well. Um, so really that's, that's what I'm carrying clothing wise besides my cold weather gear and my worn gear. This guy right here kind of hangs out on the, on the back pocket of my pack. This has got my Koala Tree uh, jacket, puffy. A pair of Marmot lightweight gloves and a buff uh, wool hat. And like I said, that just hangs out on the outside of my pack. So it's quick, easy access. This camper hooded jacket, this quality tree jacket, does pack into its own pocket and gets pretty small, but it's just a little bit faster for me to stuff it in here and then these guys, and I can keep them on the outside of my pack, but still trust that it's pretty darn waterproof. I mean, obviously these Cedar Summits aren't perfect, but I don't have to worry about, oh, my puffy needs to go inside my pack into my compression, or my, uh, compactor bag because it's raining now. It just sits right there and I'm golden. Again, smashes down pretty nice, fits right on the outside of my pack. So then for what I'm wearing, start with the footwear. I have tried multiple different kinds of shoes. I have got Lone Peak 4.0s. These are the RSMs. Um, I've tried and worn Solomon uh, X Ultra mids. 
that I really was planning on wearing because the pair that I've got were in pretty good shape. They're, they're pretty indestructible. But I've noticed that I can't walk as far without starting to feel it in my legs in a pair of shoes that aren't zero drop. And not in a pair of shoes that aren't zero drop. So those, those Solomons, for as comfortable as they were and as durable as they were, I just couldn't, I can't hike as far as I can in a pair of zero drop shoes. And I've got some Merrill zero drops, some bare feet. I bought some really cheap off-brand um, zero drop shoes off of Amazon that I like. But they're all kind of minimalist shoes. And I, I even looked at the uh, Ultra Lone Peak 4.5s lows. But considering I'm starting in March, there's still chances for snow, and I wanted something a little bit more, a little bit more waterproof. And my first pair of Lone Peak 4.0 RSMs were incredibly waterproof until they blew out after like 300 miles. So I don't have a whole lot of faith in the durability of the Ultras, but the quality in the beginning should be enough to get me through what I need them for and then I can switch to a pair of Merrells or even some of those off-brand Amazon shoes. And I'm com confident and comfortable with that. So, Hiking in another pair of Darn Tufts. Trusty old buff. Picked up a little minimalist wallet when I was at REI last weekend. Just because the wallet that I normally carry is a big honking beast and it's annoying. Uh, I decided that for my layering system, I'm going to take a pair of Under Armour heat gear. And uh, I like hiking in these because basically when I'm hiking, I'll have, obviously I'm hiking in a pair of Exficio boxers, uh, a uh, La Sportiva dry fit shirt. And then these guys are White Sierra convertible hiking pants. So these do zip off, the legs zip off. I I've never taken them off, and I typically don't hike in shorts unless it gets really obscene. Um, but if I get to that kind of variable weather, then what I may do is just keep wearing the leggings for the, the Under Armour heat gear and zip off the legs there just to kind of open up and give a little bit of air. But basically for my layering system, when I'm hiking, I'm going to have this heat gear on. On top of that, I'm going to have this La Sportiva and these White Sierras. And then just my Evolution hoodie here, my Qualitry hoodie. And worst case scenario, I'll have my Puffy on over that. Otherwise, I do have over there, I didn't think to grab, I've got a pair of uh, Frog Togs rain, rain gear, top and bottom. Worst case scenario, if I need a windbreaker, I can throw that jacket on or those pants on as well. But so that's kind of my clothing system. Just to give you a little bit of a perspective, so what I'm looking at with these two bags in my pack, weight wise. Three point three eight pounds. Okay, next, real quick, I want to talk to you about my my ditty bag here. This is going to have my kind of emergency st supplies and then my electronics in it. And the reason I want to do this one next is because I've never really talked about my electronics specifically either. Uh, so let's just hit on the ditty bag. And again, all this stuff that you see in front of you, minus the trekking poles, is going to go in this little uh, uh, Osprey dry bag here. So in here, this is just kind of my hygiene or essentials, emergency, whatever you want to call it. I've got a tick check, extra lighter in here, some uh, dental floss. I've got extra O-rings for my Sawyer. I've got some hand warmers in here, some patch kits, a thing of body glove, body glide. Although I've never had to use it, I'm taking it just as a backup. I do have a roll of Luco tape 
This I haven't had to use, but I have used it. When we were on the CT last year, my son had to use this. Uh, the blisters nearly killed him. I also have in here some Tylenol and some, some other just kind of generic uh, pain pills. I haven't picked them up yet, but I will be carrying a cycle of doxycycline just in case I feel like I start to get symptoms of, of Lyme disease or something like that. That way I've got the doxycycline I can just start myself on um, before I have to worry about trying to go into a doctor. So really that's all that, uh, I'm sorry, that's not all I got in there. I did also last weekend pick up just as a backup, a bottle of uh, potable water or potable aqua um, water purification tablets. Just as a backup, uh, I, I do have a Sawyer uh, squeeze that I'm taking with me, but God forbid it freezes, something like that. I've at least got something to get me through town until I can get a new new filter. Electronics. Now I've got my trekking poles in front of me because this, as I mentioned in a recent video, I ordered a new tripod and it showed up and it, it is going to work the way I hoped it would. It's this ultra pod that a couple other vloggers have recommended. Cool thing about it is it's got this Velcro strap on it so you can strap it to a tree branch or fence post or something like that, which I intend to do. But I also, now I just carry it right here on my trek and pole and it allowed me to also get rid of my uh, trek and pole selfie stick attachment. So I can just take this uh, uh, Manfrotto phone clamp screw it on there and I can hike like that and use this as a selfie stick. Um, so that's that's working out awesome. I, I'm really liking that. This thing is beastly uh, but lightweight and it does lock in place so your phone doesn't pop out of it which is nice. Another hot ticket item widely debated is headlamps. I'm just going with the Black Diamond Spot. I've got several headlamps this just happens to be the one I went with. It's pretty bright. I like that because uh, I'm not. I, I don't have the best night vision, so that works well for me. Got a pair of just um, cheap little Sony headphones, over-the-ear headphones. I didn't go wireless because I I have a pair of wireless headphones that I absolutely love. They're loud. They've got great bass, but then you have to recharge them. Those I don't have to recharge. I just plug it into my phone and I'm good to go. This is my backup phone. This will have. Um, it's got gut hooks on it as an emergency in case something happens to my phone that I'm, I'm recording with. It's, that's my primary, but then this has all my music, my podcasts, my audiobooks. Um, I'll have it as a backup camera if I need it. This is basically just my, my luxury item, if you will. This is my entertainment. Um, and it allows me to save all of my storage on my phone for the apps that I need and for all of my my video for my vlogging. As far as recharging those beasts, on Black Friday I got a deal on a 26,000 milliamp anchor brick. This may be the heaviest thing in my entire kit, but it's a champ. That phone uh, I record from is a Google Pixel 3. Uh, I charged that phone exclusively on this thing for a week. Um, downside, uh, this thing will charge off of two, two cables, which this has a two plug line that will it, it works just fine. Downside is it does take about six hours to charge this thing fully from dead. Um, so what I also am doing, and I don't have it in the bag, but I'm going to grab it, is I'm taking another little wall plug that I can hopefully charge this and at the same time be charging my phone if I'm in town just real briefly that way I don't have to charge this and then right away charge my phone off of that off the brick and then the only other thing I've got in here is about four charging cables um, don't ask me which ones are which uh, that Google Pixel has the the newer uh, charging plug versus the the older ones the old android style that the brick actually actually charges off of so i've got two 
well, and I actually discharged off the old Android style as well. So I think I've got three of the Android cables and then one for the, the Pixel. These three items actually go in the uh, different pockets of my pack, so I'm not going to worry about putting those in here, as well as my phone. But we'll go ahead and throw all this other stuff in that bag right there and see what we come out at. And let's see. This could weigh a ton just because of that brick. Two point seven four pounds. So not as bad as it could be. It's still an awful lot for that one little bag. It doesn't even include this stuff that'll all get weighed with the total. Let's see what else we got. All right, so what we got here is kind of our my water and uh, miscellaneous supplies. I left these over here because we talked about the the Ultra Pod, but not really the Trek and Poles. Um, these are the first pair of Trek and Poles I ever owned. They are Lecky Cristallo ASs, anti shocks. Uh, the pair of them weighs about 20 ounces, 18 ounces, something like that. They're not uh, cork, as you can tell, but they're comfortable. They work well. The only thing I don't like about them is they're the older style, and the lower portion is the twist adjustment versus the clip adjustment. Uh, especially when I first got these, I had a lot of trouble really manipulating these until I got them uh, kind of dialed into where I knew exactly how far you twisted them so you weren't over loosening them, things like that. Uh, up here, I do have some duct tape. Uh, I don't know how much, but I have duct tape wrapped around there as an emergency. Um, they're great, they're comfortable, they're lightweight, and uh, I've Bent the crap out of them a couple times and haven't had one like, actually bend yet. They're important because my tr tent is actually a trek and pole tent, so without these, I don't have a shelter. Um, water, I, I'm, as I mentioned before, I'm just taking two smart water bottles. I do have a uh, spout on one of them, kind of like that. I'm taking as a backup a Canuck dirty bag. It's a three liter dirty bag. Uh, this is a brand new one because. Somehow I actually managed to put a hole in the last in uh, my last one. Uh, wipes and a uh, deuce of spades. Sawyer, uh, Sawyer squeeze. I've got a Sawyer micro or mini, one or the other, the, the newer one. But the flow rate was just really slow and it seemed like it clogged really easily. So I'm going back to the, the squeeze. The last, um, I guess you can consider this a luxury item, is my uh, Six Moon Designs Silver Shadow Carbon. A uh, friend of mine, another classmate and vlogger, Nutty Hiker, hooked me up with some straps. Pretty straightforward on how to make those straps. Just never really dawned on me. <laughs> um, anyway, she hooked me up with some straps, and as a result, I was able to successfully attach this to my pack. So it's going with me. For the weight, I'm not going to turn it down. And an empty Gatorade bottle. If you really want to know what that's for, message me. <laughs> Otherwise, if you're a hiker, you'll already know. So we're kind of getting down to the nitty-gritty. Uh, real quick, we'll just talk about some things we've talked about in the past. It's my Six Moon Designs Lunar Solo. Love it. Um, if you have any questions about that, I do have a review. Actually, it's kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of this compared to that Amazon Lanshin one. Um, I've got a, a video for that. Just uh, I'll throw a link to that in the description. I'm just using. I threw the the bag for my Thermarest. I, I, I typically I wouldn't even carry a bag or carry the stakes in a bag, but uh, some of these tips were getting a little sharp, so I was afraid I was going to actually punch a hole in my my backpack. So I started throwing them here into this Thermarest bag. Some point down the line, I might try and get a smaller bag, but it's relatively light and it's pretty irrelevant. So, since I wasn't using the Thermarest bag for the the Neo Air, I just grabbed it to, for the tent stakes. 
Um, sleep pad is a Neo, Neo Air, Thermarest Neo Air that I've just got a bungee um, based off the same design that Natty Hiker showed me for attaching my pack to my, or my umbrella to my pack. Allows me to uh, not have to worry about a bag for that. Same concept for my little uh, off-brand inflatable pillow. And then, as I mentioned in my last video, I am going to take my uh, Z-Lite Soul uh, foam pad as well. And, and you'll see when I actually pack my pack. Uh, I actually stick this in my pack, so it's kind of like a, a back, a, a frame in that frameless Zerk uh, pack. And it, it just always has made it more comfortable for me when I'm packing it. I was in, uh, ultimately going to have this shipped to me, but it's like 10 ounces. And uh, I, I feel like if I'm in a, a shelter, I may end up just using this, or at the very least I can use this underneath my Neo Air. That way I don't have to worry about uh, getting my footprint out and, and using that and things like that um, to protect the Neo Air from the, the wood floors and the shelters. Uh, as well as if I just don't feel like inflating the Neo Air and it's not that cold out one night, then I'll just use the Z-Lite. Um, and then, of course, my my trusty Cedar Ridge uh, 10 degree Lacante quilt. Love this bad boy. This bad boy will go with me as far as I make it until I backtrack to Damascus for trail days in May. And in May, I will be meeting the boys from Cedar uh, Cedar Ridge and swapping this out for a 50 degree quilt for them warmer nights. Last but not least, I've talked about both of these items, or all these items before, except for one of them, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Uh, real quick, I've got the uh, Z-Packs bear bag. Uh, as you see, it's got five days worth of food in it. Comes out in a little over seven pounds. Tokes titanium 900 milliliter pot, homemade koozie. Inside there, I've got the BRS 5000 stove, uh, small fuel canister and a towel, and a lighter. Uh, I did decide that I'm keeping, as I mentioned before, I'm keeping the uh, mesh bag just because it kind of holds it all together. Uh, because my homemade cozy was one of the first ones I made and it's not the tightest so it, it tends to kind of fall off a little bit. Of course the Mountain Smith Zerk 40 liter pack. It's... Um, when I had it on the CT, it, it leaked through a little bit. I probably could uh, use some water repellent on it. But I found it was easier just to get a trash compactor bag and keep all the important stuff inside the trash compactor bag. The z packs bag and the, the pot kind of sit on top of all that, and then it just gets closed up. But uh, a little bit of hand sanitizer on there. I utilize all these pockets. I uh, love it. It's a good pack. Uh, it was my first frameless pack and uh, took a little bit of getting used to but but I'm loving it and then of course my last item and this is the one that I, I made, made a mention of on my last video um, this is dash dash will be joining me on my adventure like I said some people are gonna say he's a luxury item but he's not. The reason that Dash is joining me is because his, his big brother Flash is staying home with my wife and kids. So Flash will be here taking my place and Dash is coming with me on the Appalachian Trail. What I'm doing with this guy, basically Dash is going to join me in my pictures and some of my videos and things like that. And that will be my way of my family connecting with me 
while I'm away from them. And then dash here, alongside a uh, laminated map that I've got upstairs that I framed of the Appalachian Trail, will be a way for my kids to track where I'm at on the trail. They can dry erase, uh, mark where I'm at on the trail. It's just kind of a way for me and my, my family to connect a little bit, even though we're going to be so far apart. On that note, Dash needs a buff. <laughs> so if anybody has any suggestions on a, uh, something I could use for a buff for Dash, really appreciate it. Throw that in your comments. Shoot me a message, whatever. Love to hear it. Let's pack all this stuff up and see how it looks. Remember, this is a winter kit, a couple of luxury items, five days of food, it does have one full water bottle, but not two, 26.04 pounds. So in the end, I'm pretty happy with 26 pounds. There's plenty of lighter people out there, I'm sure. I've got enough items that I feel like I'm going to be comfortable. The only concern I've got is not the quality of my tent. Just merely whether or not I'm going to wish I had something bigger. Uh, if I get stuck in there on rainy days, the Lunar Solo is ample for a sleeping arrangement. But if you're stuck hanging out in it, it may not be that exciting. Hopefully I don't get stuck hanging out in my tent too much. Other than that, I feel like I've got everything I'm going to need. I've hiked with this pack now, weighing what it weighs for probably... Gosh, I don't know, 30, 35 miles, 40 miles, and I've never once felt like I had any weight on my back. Uh, I've done a couple of pretty good distance hikes, 
12, 13, 15 mile hikes and never had any issues. Uh, I'm confident in, in my footwear. Like to the ex like I said, to the extent of durability is my only concern. Um, I'm fired up. I leave next Wednesday night to meet another vlogger in Kansas City. And from there, we're driving to Arkansas, picking up a couple more guys and driving on to Georgia. Um, I start on March 14th. Man, I'm excited. If you haven't already, please uh, hit that subscribe button. Click that bell. You'll get notified whenever my new videos come out. Uh, I'd love to hear any comments you've got, good or bad. Um, love to hear what your thoughts are on my gear. Feel free to tell me that, that uh, Dash is a luxury item. It's your opinion. Whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... Normally, I'd say I wish you were here, but right this moment, man, I wish I was there. Soon, though. See you on the trail. If I'm freezing my caboose off at night, uh, even under my quilt, my uh, which I doubt. I've never once been cold under my Cedar Ridge quilt. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> that was awesome.